Now, of course, with the story of the creator, we've already spoken about Carlo Collodi, but in terms of how it, you know, that story interjects with uh, Walt Disney. Uh, so you had uh, one of the animators uh, who was on the team called Norm Ferguson. He presents the story to Walt Disney. And Walt Disney, he's so infused by this, he decides that well, the next film they were going to do was going to be Bambi. That ends up being shelved until 1942 because they're like, no, we want to, you know, this is a really good story. This will sell really well. So work starts on this. But first of all, obviously, like we said, it's the opposite of uh, Snow White. So with Snow White, this is a very short story. You turn it into a big film. This the novel is very, very long. And so to condense it now into a children's film means that some things are going to have to be left out. So originally the person that they get to do the script for this is Bianca Maggioli. So she ends up working on it. However, this is a problem that I found as a script writer as well, right? Is when you're trying to adapt a full length book into a script, you have problems in the sense of, you know, basically if you're very true to the original, you end up having the problem where the film would end up being far too long. If, however, you end up cutting things out, then some of the integrity of the original story ends up being lost, right? And that ends up becoming very, very separate from what the original was. And so the original script that Bianca and Majoli did, it just stuck too closely to the actual original. So what Walt Disney decided instead was he decided that Pinocchio was going to be a lot more of a kind of like likable character rather than the kind of like you know mischievous kind of unlikable character that you have in the original and also they decided that Jiminy Cricket was going to be much more first of all much more human-like and also was going to be much bigger of a character yeah uh, than, than he was in the original because in the original there's a cricket and Pinocchio ends up squishing him and then occasionally you know the ghost of the cricket comes back to kind of like torment Pinocchio However, they decided not to get squished and for him to kind of stay and be the, uh, the conscience of the boy. You know, so they worked on all these different things and in total they ended up being seven writers. Uh, many of these had been in Snow White, but you also had some new ones. We've got them on screen now. And one of the things that they really struggled with, yeah, was obviously how much like a puppet and how much like an actual cricket should we make Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket respectively? Because in the original sketches, yeah, for uh, Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket, what they had was, for instance, Jiminy Cricket with like large antennas, yeah? And they had Pinocchio looking like a little wooden puppet would be. However, what they decided afterwards was that actually, instead of looking at like the, what the real life things would be and turning them to look more human, what they instead decided to do was to do the opposite. So make a cute looking boy and make like a kind of a, a human, like more like a, like a little man and make them less human, right? So rather than like having like a wooden puppet and making it look like a boy, instead have a boy and then make him look a little bit more wooden. And instead of having like a bug, instead have a human and make him a little bit more bug-like. So that way they're much more relatable to, uh, to, to the audience and that way that like, the audience is able to kind of enjoy them much more and feel a connection with them than they otherwise would if it was just a wooden doll and a little bug. Now, in terms of the story of the studio, uh, there was a lot of different things with this. So obviously, because of the success of Snow White, the Disney Corporation ended up having a lot bigger of a budget uh, than uh, they had before. So this meant that they were able to splash out a little bit on the different actors that they had. So what Walt Disney decided instead was that instead of having an adult doing the voice of Pinocchio, what they wanted instead was to have a child actor. And so who they decided on was Dickie Jones. So Dickie Jones at this age was just 11. Uh, he would later go on to be in like loads of different films and stuff. Uh, but at the time, he had uh, done a really good performance in uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. So we're going to cover that at a different point uh, down the line. It's really, really classic film. If you haven't seen it, definitely go and check it out. So he's uh, one of the little uh, page boys within the, uh, the Senate building there. So definitely go check that out. Um, but anyway, so they had him uh, as the voice of Pinocchio. And for Jiminy Cricket, they decided that they were going to have Ukulele Ike. So this was uh, Cliff Edwards. So he was like a famous singer at the time. And actually many of the songs which are sung yeah, were uh, done by Cliff Edwards. Yes. So again, because they've got a bigger budget, they're able to splash out a bit more. And actually, I just want to say this, yeah, uh, in the last video, I made a bit of a mistake here yeah, when I said that the, um, so when I was talking about uh, Born Co uh, music publishers, I said that they still owned the right just to uh, uh, the song from Snow White. 
actually that's not entirely true because they also own the rights to the music in Pinocchio. So when you know, for instance, the, the song "Wish Upon a Star," that is still owned by uh, Bourne Co. Um, and it's quite interesting actually because you know, when you wish upon a star, that is still one of the theme songs for Disney. So they used that song quite a lot, yeah. When you think about Disney and think of the music, yeah, that's Wish Upon a Star, isn't it? But they still don't technically own the rights to that music, which is, again, quite interesting. And also as well, in terms of the casting, yeah, this is something which kind of really blew my mind. So Gideon the Cat, um, he is mute throughout the film. And the only time you ever hear anything from him is two hiccups. Those hiccups came from the voice of Mel Blanc. Now, who is Mel Blanc? Mel Blanc, for those who have seen Looney Tunes, is all the voices of Looney Tunes. So Bugs Bunny, Daphne Duck, etc. And also, anyone who's seen the Flintstones, he is the voice of Barney Gumble. So you have this dude here, and he originally was going to be the voice of Gideon the Cat. However, what they decided is that they, he was going to be mute. And so, yeah, so the only things you have of Mel Blanc is the two little hiccups in the thing. So obviously Looney Tunes and uh, Flintstones came out well after this film. So no one knew just how like great Mel Blanc would be. But without realizing it, Disney ended up missing out on one of the best voice actors of all time being in Pinocchio. And all we get out of him is just two hiccups. It's like, you can't believe it. But this, is, this is why we look at the story of the studio because all the kind of background things of, you know, what if I, what would have happened if that actor had been chosen or that actor had had more lines or whatever it is? Yeah, it's just it's little things like that are just absolutely fascinating to me. And finally, as well, when we talk about the story of the studio, there's also a thing where you know in 1936 there was going to be a, a film called The Adventures of Pinocchio, and this film was going to be Italian, and this actually, if it had come out, would have beaten Snow White as being the first fully full length uh, cell animated film. However, for whatever reason, I can't remember the exact reason, I think they ran out of money or something like that, it never actually got released. And so to this day, you still can't see anything other than just a few like little uh, stills that they have from the film. But this would have come out in 1936, like you said, and yeah, this would have blown Snow White out of the water, yeah, in terms of being the first feature length uh, cell animated film. So again, really interesting kind of thing to see that like, maybe this other guy, this Italian dude, maybe they would have been better than kind of like than Disney if this had happened in a different way. But again, it's just fascinating like seeing like the film industry and stuff and so many what ifs and, and all that kind of stuff.